Good morning, it is day two of this video series and today what I want to talk about is hotel reservations. And so we are actually staying at the New York Marriott downtown in Manhattan. And uh, the reason we're staying here is because that is the host hotel for the conference. And whenever I actually go out to travel for work and business, I always try to stay at the host hotel. The reason being it's going to allow for additional networking opportunities. And so whenever people are getting on the elevator to go back to their rooms or to the conferences, uh, more than likely it's somebody who was at your conference. Or if it is a type of hotel where a lot of conferences occur, you may meet people that didn't come for your particular conference that you can also interact with. The other piece is after the sessions are over, people are going down to the bar. And so then you can go to the bar and you may be able to meet people that you've been trying to run into. So it just gives you an opportunity to create additional networking opportunities. It's also, of course, as you already probably know, a matter of convenience. So if I can stay at the same hotel where all the sessions are, all I have to do is literally go downstairs, attend the sessions, and then I can go back up to my room and change clothes, use the bathroom, regroup, whatever is needed without having to get in an Uber or walk down the street a couple of blocks to another hotel. So that is the main reason why I usually always, always, always try and book at the host hotel. Here's a quick tip. So for this particular trip, there was a room rate, a book rate for the conference. And that's another perk is because sometimes you get to stay in a nicer hotel at a much lower cost due to the conference. There was actually one in Naples that we used to go to. It was an HR conference and it was at the Ritz-Carlton. And you could stay there for $169 a night. So a lot of people went just because it was the Ritz for $169 a night in Naples. It had nothing to do with the conference. But anyways, one of the things that I want to talk about from a tip standpoint is whenever I booked the rates, the room rates, or the group rates was only through Friday night. And so what I had to do was book another additional day for Saturday night because we're not leaving until Sunday. And so I booked through the Marriott and what happened is you book it separately. And then once you get to the hotel, you tell them that I've got two reservations and then you have to check out of the one. So I just checked out and then check right back into the same room on today. So somehow Marriott links them together. So if you ever run into it where you're having a group rate for a couple of days, but you need to add on an additional date, I want to save you the phone call. You don't have to call the Marriott. Just go ahead and book that night that you need, but it needs to be the same exact room type that you booked originally. And then once you check in, they'll see both reservations and they'll advise you to check out on the day you're supposed to check out of the original room rate and then check back in to the new one but you'll get to stay in your same room so hopefully that saves you a phone call um, speaking of marriott i try to book uh, through the same brands and so uh, marriott and hilton are usually who i'm booking through also when it comes to flights i'm usually always on american airlines and so i like to do that because it builds up brand loyalty it builds up points um, it builds up the experience i know what to expect each and every time more more than likely and uh, so i just encourage you that if you're booking make sure that you do have one of their loyalty rewards numbers that you're always using it um, and then just try to stay consistent with a particular brand um, to go out and book all of your trips. Now I was with a Planet Marketing and where I thought I could book all my trips through it and actually get um, commissions for my own business travel and I just didn't have time to keep up with it and it was a little cumbersome trying to book. Uh, I just got out of it and just decided to just only book through American Airlines and Marriott and Hilton for hotel rooms. Nothing wrong with the network marketing itself. It was just too much for me for what I was trying to do, which is just book my business and personal travel. Now, what happens when I'm not at a conference? Uh, I've got to book a room. Who do I book then? Again, I try and stick with Marriott or the Hilton uh, just because if my got enough points built up from business, sometimes I can get substantial discounts for my personal travel or even maybe a free night or two. Same thing with airlines. I still stick with American Airlines even if it's not a business trip and it is a personal trip. Hopefully these tips helped you uh, just to know how we actually do accommodations for business conferences and some personal conferences and different ways that that you can um, actually maximize your time and be convenient and just go ahead and get all this stuff booked. So that is all I have today for the video on New York City accommodations. We're gonna do a quick room tour so you can see what it looks like and stay tuned for the next video. All right, so we have come back from shopping and I never got the room tour. So here is the room lived in, uh, <laughs> typical New York 
fairly small, but it is nice. Uh, so, pardon the mess. Just your regular size closet. That major bathroom. And here is the view of the Hudson River. So we have a pretty nice view. So we are going to close these 